Today's episode is once again sponsored by our friends over at Amino Apps. Amino, of course, is the awesome social app with communities for just about every beloved game or series, including our favorite, Fire Emblem, with quizzes, discussions, challenges, videos, and even more. So make sure to follow us over there, as we'll be doing a Q&A within the coming days, and you can ask us anything you want. I know a lot of you really liked checking out Amino after the last time, and I know they loved it too, so thank you so much for the support. You can check it out by clicking the links to the Google Play and iOS Play stores in the description below. What's up guys, Stevie here with Lucky Crit. In certain villages in Fire Emblem Echoes, starting in Act 3 of the game's story, peddlers will be present and will have the ability to send one item each over to the other team. There's a peddler for both Alm and Celica in Act 3, and three peddlers on each route in Act 4. This means you can have Alm send four items to Celica, and Celica send four items to Alm in total. I'll now mention their locations, which might be minor spoilers as far as area names go, but if you haven't made it to Act 4 yet in the story, then feel free to skip ahead to the time on screen once I mention Act 3's locations. In Act 3, you'll find a peddler in the forest village on Alm's route, and another in the mountain village on Celica's route. Now's the time to skip ahead if you don't want to know the locations in Act 4. In Act 4, there will be three peddlers in Nui Baba's abode on Alm's route, and three peddlers in the Sage's Hamlet on Celica's route. Since the amount of items you can send in between routes is limited overall, I know a bunch of you are very likely wondering what would be the best items to send in between, so let's take a closer look, shall we? One tricky thing to keep in mind is that there are more weapons and quest items that you may want to pass back and forth than there are uses of the peddler. If you desire transferring any weapons or stat boosting items between the routes, then you may end up having to wait until the post game, utilize DLC, or make some other interesting movements along your journey to complete all of the side quests, since there are a few items that will need to be traded to the other routes to complete them, and you've only got 8 uses of the peddlers overall within the game. For example, in Chapter 3 of Celica's route in the Mountain Village, there is a lumberjack looking for an axe. Celica doesn't have access to an axe item at this point in the game to give him, which would then require you to have Alm send the splitting axe that was obtained in front of Myson's house over to Celica to complete the quest. However, with some careful planning, it will actually be possible for Celica to pick up this very splitting axe on her route if Alm avoids picking it up at the very beginning of the game. If you'd like to do this, make sure you avoid grabbing the axe with Alm, and then near the end of Chapter 2 on Celica's route, avoid entering Zofia Harbor and head immediately south to Ram Village and pick it up. This is also where you can have Celica recruit Cliff and Faye if you chose not to recruit them with Alm, which you can learn more about in this episode we did here. Celica will also find the Rion shield on her route, which must be sent to Alm's route through the Peddler if you want to finish the quest involved with it. The reward for this quest is Pegasus Cheese, which is the Fire Emblem Echoes version of the Speedwings item, granting plus 2 speed, which you get by giving Lord Rion his shield back, but the Rion shield, and the Fugue shield from the other side quest for that matter, are great shields for your units to use, so you may not deem the rewards worthwhile in this case if you like having these items. The Rion Shield has a plus 5 defense passive skill that can be learned, which is quite nice on top of its plus 2 attack, defense, and resistance. The Rion Shield may also serve useful to help any ailing cleric with their attack and healing range, since that range is equivalent to half of their attack stat, so if you've got a low attack and thus range challenged cleric on either route, it might be useful in that scenario. The Fugue Shield at first seems a little bit less useful, teaching swap, Coral Cover, and granting plus 2 defense and resistance, but the Coral Cover skill doubles the effects of terrain bonuses, so this could be a really cool and clutch item when used with the proper terrain, like the Gravestones in Celica's route, forts, mountains, etc. With a massive terrain advantage like that, units will be able to dodge many more attacks, and this could be a central part of your team's strategy on those maps. When trading in the Fugue Shield, you receive a Golden Apple, which grants 100 EXP, but it's nowhere near as useful as the Pegasus Cheese stat booster from the Rion Shield, so this may also help to determine your decision. Of course, by finishing both of these quests you'll receive more Renown, but this time around in Echoes, Renown is a lot less important, as you can no longer get items at Renown ranks like you could in Awakening and Fates, and there isn't much of an online component to Echoes, so you may not find Renown all that useful. This will all come down to personal preference and playstyle, as many would also agree that mages like equipping rings more than shields, and physical fighters like equipping weapons most of the time, so perhaps you'd rather have the stat boosting items and other rewards instead. Or you may just wait until the post game and hand these items in without using the peddlers, but do be careful as some quests may be missable later on. If you'd like to see a full subquest guide for Fire Emblem Echoes, be sure to let us know in the comments. By giving the cheese lover in Zofia Castle on Alm's route the Pegasus cheese at the end of his quest line, the reward will be some exotic spices, which are a normal food item aside from the fact that they can be exchanged for 3 gold marks. 
This is a great way to get some extra gold marks for forging your weapons, and you can also have Alm send over the exotic spices to help with the gold mark drought that Celica tends to have in the early part of her route. Ultimately, this would give her army a much easier time forging weapons during Act 3 or 4. This will of course cost you the Pegasus Cheese with its speed plus 2 boost, but Alm does receive one from another area of his journey, so you can effectively keep the Rion Shield and still get the exotic spices by trading in the second Pegasus Cheese. Just make sure you do use the Act 3 Peddler before entering Act 4 though, as otherwise you'll have to wait until you find the Peddlers in Act 4 to send over any items. Aside from quest items, you may want to send weapons through the Peddler to be wielded by characters on the other route for a more distinct advantage. The Shadow Sword and Brave Sword that Celica acquires in Act 3 can be forged into rapiers that deal effective damage to mounted units and armor knights, which are much more plentiful on Alm's route throughout his conquest of Regel. Perhaps you like Leon or Atlas, or anyone else you've made into an archer on Celica's route better than the archers that you get on Alm's route and want to send him a killer bow. You can forge a steel bow with some of the more plentiful gold marks that Alm gets along his early journey, and then send it over for them to use. I've also seen many players keen to transfer over the blessed weapons between the two paths to help against terrors. In general, Celica will be the one fighting more terrors on her route, as Alm tends to be fighting enemy soldiers in most of his story missions, and will only rarely encounter terrors in dungeons and when they're summoned by summoners, so it's definitely a good consideration to make regarding using the peddlers. Celica also gets a lot of Pegasus Knights on her route that when promoted into Falcon Knights will get inherent bonus damage against Terrors that will stack with the Blessed Lance's bonus. This means you can effectively turn your Falcon Knights into Terror Killing Machines, which may serve useful against some of the scarier late game Terrors and hordes of them that she'll be facing. Celica will get a Blessed Lance on her route, but it comes much later, so if you'd like to have your Falcon Knights quickly be able to dispatch any Terror you come across, I'd definitely consider sending one over from Alm's route. You could even use peddlers to send stat boosting items you receive from quests and missions between the two teams if you have any struggling units on the other team that can use them. Please also keep in mind that when receiving your 5 free DLC gifts in the DLC menu, whichever character you were last playing as is the one who will receive the gift, so don't mess up who you're giving which items to and have to waste peddler uses sending them to the correct army. So in summary, if you want to complete every quest utilizing the peddlers, be sure to send the Rion shield from Celica to Alm. If you didn't ignore the splitting axe in Ram Village with Alm and grab it as Celica, send that from Alm to Celica, and then after that you can prioritize sending exotic spices to Celica's route for some extra gold marks, blessed weapons to Celica for an easier time against terrors, shadow swords or brave swords to Alm's route to be made into rapiers for an easier time against mounted and armored enemies, any forged items you want other characters to have, and potentially any stat boosters you don't want with that army, but you've only got four items to send from each side, so plan it all out and make sure you're prepared. That's gonna wrap up today's episode guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video or learned anything new, please slash the thumbs up and comment Echoes in the comment section, and also be sure to let us know your plans with the Peddlers and your playthroughs of Fire Emblem Echoes. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so for more content like this, and also follow us on Twitter at Lucky Crit Gaming for any news and updates revealed on the fly that might not make it into these episodes. And I'll see you all next time. No mercy! Damn, they nearly had me, but not today.